Okay, so show clearly that the sum of the nth and the n plus 1 term is n plus 1 squared. Now, I'm going to change the question in the beginning to try to make you understand what's going on here. Okay? Supposing it said show clearly or find the sum of the, the third term and the you know, 20th term. What would you do? How would I find the sum of the third term and the 20th term? I'd right, so find what the third term is first by replacing n by 3. I'd find what the 20th term is by replacing n by 20. And then I'd add them together. Okay? All right. You do exactly the same thing. There's absolutely no difference between that and what they ask you to do. It's just that they have given you some algebraic term. So the nth term, okay, is when, of course, as it is, we place the n by n. It's going to be n times n plus 1 over 2, right? And the n plus 1 term, n plus 1 term, is going to be when you replace the n by n plus 1. So you're going to have, in the first, you're going to have n plus 1 times, we so have n plus 1 plus another 1. n plus 1 plus another 1 divided by 2. So this n plus 1 now has taken the place of this n in the formula. So you have n plus 1, okay, times, then you've got n plus 1, you place the n plus 1. That gives you n plus 1 times n plus 2 over 2. Okay. So now, the sum of these two terms. So I'm going to have n times n plus 1 over 2 plus n times n plus, sorry, n plus 1 times n plus 2 over 2. Come on, Mr. Eraser. Okay. Plus, and you've got n takes a bit of time to react. We've got n plus 1 times n plus 2 over 2. Now, your problem might have been how to manipulate this, so to, to manipulate this, right? Now, you could, you know, uh, basically expand everything, okay, and then bring everything together, and, or you could think of it in this way. You could say, let's, let's try to factorize this. Okay, so you got a common factor of a half which is over two and over two. Yes, this will be make it a bit easier to, to manipulate it. So you got a half is a common factor. Then you got n plus one. N plus one is a common factor, isn't it? N plus one is in both of these terms. So now I'll write a square bracket. What's left here? It's going to be just n, isn't it? And what's left here? You've got plus, and you're going to have n plus two. All right? No, because n plus 1 times n plus 2. I've already, I've already taken out n plus 1. Yes? If I multiply n plus 2 by a half n plus 1, I get that. Okay, now you've got a half times n plus 1 times, you've got 2n plus 2. Right? You see that? 2n plus 2. Now, 2 is a common factor in, these, in this bracket. I can take that out. Yes? So let me just make some space here. I can take that 2 out, so I'll, I'll take out the 2. So I've got 2 over 2 times n plus 1 times n plus 1. So if I take 2 out of it, this bracket, I'm left with n plus 1 inside the bracket. That 2 cancels with the 2, and you're left with n plus 1 times n plus 1, which is n plus 1 squared, as required. Okay, show that the sum is n plus 1 squared. Okay, that's a nice, neat way of doing it, where you take out a common factor to simplify it. Right? So I took out the common factor of a half and n plus 1, and then everything worked out nicely, cancelled out, and became as required. All right? They could, you could have done it a longer way by expanding these and then bringing them together, and then it would still work out to be the answer, but it's a lot more long-winded. All right? It says, find the values of the two consecutive terms which have a sum of 3,481. So we know 
basically that the sum of two consecutive terms is given by n plus 1 squared. Even if you couldn't prove it, they told you it. The sum of a term and the n plus 1 term, well, those are two consecutive terms, aren't they? The term and the term after it. So it says find okay, the, two, the values of the two consecutive terms whose sum is 3,481. So we want to find when n plus 1 squared is equal to 3,481. Because this expression n plus 1 squared tells us the sum of two consecutive terms. I want to know when their sum is 3,481. So to solve this, we can take the square root of both sides. So we have the square root of 3,481. It's going to end with a 9, I think. Oh, 3,481. Okay, that gives you 59. So n plus 1 equals 59. Yes? You can't subtract the 1 until you've got rid of the square. We found the square root of both sides, and then, now I can subtract the 1. So now n is equal to 59 minus... n is equal to 59 minus 1, which is 58. So the two consecutive terms must be 58 and 59. 58 and 59. Okay? So that's find the values of the two consecutive terms. So that's 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 not the that's not the term, that's the value of n. So we want to find okay the values of the two consecutive terms. So we have to now put that back into our original formula which is n times n plus 1 divided by 2, okay? So when n equals 58, you have 58 times 59 over 2, right? 58 times 59 over 2. So the formula was n times n plus 1 over 2, right? That was our formula, okay? And that will give you the 58th term and the 59th term when n equals 59, you will have uh, 59 times 60 divided by 2. Okay, so, okay. So you have 58 times 59 divided by 2, which is 1711. Okay, that's the 58 term, 1711. And then you have 59 times 60 divided by 2. Okay, so you have 59 times 30, basically. Okay, which gives you 1770. 1770. 1770. And you can check to see, does that give us the right product? All right, does it, does it, does it fit the question? You do 1770 multiplied by... 1711, and it should give you, oops, no, sorry, a sum, not multiplication, sum. If you add them together, the sum has to be 3481. You get, oh, let me start again. You get 1711, 1711, plus 1770, 1770. The sum has to be 3481, which is. Okay, so we found the two values using the answers from before. Now, one of the things you should really try to keep in mind here is the fact that we didn't know, we didn't need to know how to show this, okay? Well, we did know need to, but we didn't need to have that understanding of how to show this in order to answer part two. We could have answered part two with, without knowing how to do part one, D part one, okay? Because D part 2 doesn't rely on you ha showing this, it relies on you using what they already gave you. They told you the sum of two consecutive numbers, n and n plus 1, is given by this expression. So you could have got the marks, the two marks, for part 2, without having to known how to do part, part 1. And that's the case in a lot of these questions, where, especially where they say, show that. Right? They, they, they do this on purpose so that you can gain some marks which aren't, you know, going to be penalized from you because you didn't know how to do something, you know, and you know how to do something else, then you're able to get all the marks from the other parts of the question. So don't just give up when you see a question, and, you know, of this form. Try and see, can I use 
but if you if you don't know how to do this, can I use what they gave me to answer other parts of the question? It's very important for you to do that to save yourself from losing marks. Okay?